Jet Sports has it covered for all the latest and greatest NFL news and rumors. Before we went live here moments ago, Nico Collins getting a three-year, around $24 million extension. We've got you covered with that update. And, of course, some juicy NFL rumors out there. You want more free coverage? Hit that sub button right now. Let's stick with the wide receiver room. You know, Nico Collins getting a big, fat extension. I think well-deserved, given how well he played last year for Houston. Cortland Sutton now also looking for a new deal. That one, was, of course, was going on before Collins got paid. He was not present at OTAs as he looks for an adjustment to his contract. Here's what Sutton is set to make over the next two years in cash, i.e. what he's making in terms of actual dollars and cents, not stuff that's already been paid to him. $13.6 million, $14 million. He wants a bit of a pay raise, somewhere to the $15 to $16 million range per ESPN's Jeremy Fowler. And you know, there's no guarantee money left on his deal. I get that part. He has not been that good. Uh, and look, now look, quarterback plays a real factor in that. I, I think we can acknowledge that. Um, Denver's had some inconsistent quarterback play. Hoping Bo Nix ends up being the guy now as they move forward. But he has not put up a 900-yard season in over four years. And it's a little tough on one hand for him to go, yeah, you know, Sutton, you're by far our number one wide receiver, but geez, can we really give you an extra pay raise on top of that? At the same time, Denver doesn't want to let him leave or, or play too much hardball here because the other receivers are not good, or at least they're not proven. At least they're not good enough to be a number one receiver. Maybe that's the way we're putting it. Like, you know, if, if Josh Reynolds is your three, we saw that that can work. Marvin Mims is your two, maybe. Troy Franklin, I like him, but he was a fourth-round pick. Denver needs Cortland Sutton in this wide receiving core to not be the worst receiving core in the NFL. And when you have a young quarterback, you spent a top-15 pick on in Bo Nix, smart NFL franchises don't trade away all of their good wide receivers and say, good luck, rookie, have fun. And yeah, there's Tim Patrick in there too, but he's always banged up and he's good when he's healthy, but you can't really trust him. Um, we've seen flashes of good play out of Tim Patrick, to be fair, but he, he basically hasn't played football in, in two years now. In fact, he literally hasn't. And his best year was about 700 yards, which is good. But it's been two years. It's tough to really trust him there. So what should Denver do with Cortland Sutton? T for trade him. P for pay or W for wait. The pin comment on today's show. If that ad comes on YouTube, that's just fine. Ignore it. Head down, type T, P, or W. Speaking of contracts, interesting stuff being reported here around Jordan Love, the Packers quarterback. So, of note, um, Love is in the final year of his contract. Now, he is not making that much money. He's owed about $17 million this year, part of the kind of like not franchise tag, but kind of franchise tag deal he got from Green Bay. Um, Ian Rappaport says it is a matter of when, not if, he becomes among the highest paid quarterbacks in the NFL. And Mike Garofalo is saying, you know what? He'll actually be in Joe Burrow territory, i.e. maybe not just among, but the highest paid quarterback in the NFL. Love had been asked, you know, are you okay with playing on your current deal? He's like, ah, we'll see. So not really a commitment there, but he's, out, he's also at OTA. So, you know, I think that's more just like, I have to keep some semblance of leverage available still, but I, got, but I also got to be a leader. It's, it's the weird part there. Here's the contract stuff. APY, average per year. The, money, the number that gets thrown around immediately, right? Joe Burrow's at $55 million per year. Jared Goff's now at 53. If you were to ask all 30, maybe 30 teams, not including the Lions and Green Bay, if you were to ask 30 teams, would you rather have Jared Goff or Jordan Love for the next three to five years, how many are picking Jordan Love over Goff? I don't think it's unanimous, but I think you might get more on Jordan Love. Isn't that the new? And then at that point, you're, you're almost in Joe Burrow territory. Guaranteed money, though, is what matters to me here. You know, we've seen teams get out of contracts because they structured it properly. There wasn't much guaranteed money. And the gap between Jared Goff's guaranteed deal and Joe Burrow's guaranteed deal is sizable. So I think the guaranteed money matters a lot more there. You know, Daniel Jones got $40 million a year, right? He ain't even close to top 10 highest paid guarantee, though. 
because the Giants got that, that deal a, a, after a year. Now, or after this year, which I, at this point they're probably going to. So when it comes to the highest paid quarterback class, should Jordan Love be among that? Why for yes and for no? Go ahead and sound off for me in the comment section of today's show. For me, it's a little bit of a tricky question because Jordan Love played lights out down the stretch last year. The final 10 games of his season, he completed 70% of his passes for 2,000, 7.8 yards per attempt. That's an elite figure. 23 touchdowns, three interceptions. Uh, two of those INTs came in the final playoff game. Uh, that, and he, he lit up the, the Dallas Cowboys defense with ease. He looked like a top five quarterback down the stretch last year. The first nine games, though, it's like, ah, is Jordan Love a starting caliber quarterback? I don't know. Now, you, you definitely want to probably favor more of the more recent uh, production from Love, but that's still a very small sample size to pay a guy 55-ish million dollars a year. Now, with what we've seen growth-wise, I feel better about doing that. And to a certain extent, quarterback contracts kind of just become, uh, it is what it is. It's all, it's all or nothing. You know, you don't want to pay him $54 million. You, you want to give him, you know, 49 or whatever. Well, $5 million at quarterback going to make or break you? It's if the quarterback is good enough. And at that point, it's kind of, it's, it, it is what it is. Either pay him, pay the market rate, knowing it's crazy expensive, or just don't pay him at all. And if the Packers make, let's say the Packers give Jordan Love 55, $55.1 million a year. He won't last a year as being a top three highest paid quarterback, I don't think. Trevor Lawrence will get that from the Jags, because uh, the exacts aren't going to be made for, for Lawrence for Love. It's all about the upside, right? Tua might get that from Miami or somebody. And Dak will get that from Dallas or maybe more likely somebody else altogether. So like all of a sudden, like, okay, you, you overpaid in a year. It seems like a steal. You'd rather be on, on the front end of those big quarterback contract waves, not on the back end. But just got to hope that that 10-game sample size was what you'll see from Love moving forward. And the small sample size does it is at least worth mentioning. Now, if you did not get the 2024 NFL Draft Hat for your favorite team, Fanatics has you covered. Chatsports.com slash NFL Draft Hats. That link will be in the comment section and the description of today's show. All 32 NFL teams. So if, for example, maybe you're a Cardinals fan who hasn't been able to buy the Marvin Harrison Jr. jersey yet, you can at least get the draft hat that he wore. That's available. Links in the comments and the description of today's show. Chatsports.com slash NFL Draft Hat. Let's talk trades here for Miles Sanders. His time in Carolina might be coming to an end soon. I don't, I don't know how much longer he's going to last. After signing a four-year, $25.4 million contract last offseason, Sanders, frankly, was terrible. He was not good. Uh, he's due $4.22 million this year which is the salary cap savings if the Panthers could find a trade partner after June 1st. They'd save a couple hundred thousand dollars if they cut him. After June 1st, it becomes a bit more financially manageable for Carolina to move on from Sanders. They draft Jonathan Brooks. They signed Rashad Penny. They have Chuba Hubbard. They have uh, Raheem Blackshue, who I think will make the team at least as, as a return man. Sanders went from one of the more hyper-efficient backs in the NFL in Philadelphia to one of the least hyper least efficient backs in football in Carolina. And I've often said we can blame supporting cast for a lot of stuff, especially in, in the backfield, but when the efficiency plummets, when the yards per carry plummet, and the other back on the roster is better in all those metrics by, by a good margin, that might be a you problem. But maybe he does just need a, a change of, of scenery. So maybe this Bleach Report trade idea, Panthers get a six-round pick, Colts get Miles Sanders actually could work out a little bit. You know, Carolina, I mentioned that they have Brooks. They have Hubbard. Sanders is RB is an RB3 who doesn't help on special teams. Eh, I don't know about that one. Raheem Blackshear, Rashad Penny. There's a, there's a scenario in which Carolina says, peace out, Miles. We're going to move on. Indy, meanwhile, obviously have Jonathan Taylor. Do we trust Evan Hall, Tyler Goodson, Trey Sermon as, as a, a backup trio? Maybe, maybe not. So I do think Indy could actually make some sense there. 
for Miles Sanders. So name a player who you think ends up getting traded. Any player, any team, to any team. You can even be funny stuff and say, you know, get ready to learn CFL, buddy. Name that player for me in the comment section right now. Let's check in on the Justin Simmons situation. So ESPN listed the Tennessee Titans as the best fit for Simmons, the former Broncos safety, who frankly, I am surprised is still unsigned. Here's the argument from Matt Mallon of ESPN, or, or Bowen, however you pronounce it. Sorry, either way, my, uh, either way. The top safety still available would be an easy fit under new Titans defensive coordinator, Denard Wilson. Simmons is a high-level communicator in the secondary with deep range and great ball skills. He has at least three se uh, interceptions in six straight seasons and is a productive starter who is strong in run support. In Tennessee, Simmons would start opposite Amani Hooker, giving Wilson two interchangeable safeties with scheme versatility, bolstering a rapidly improving center that added cornerbacks with Jarius Sneed and Chidabe Awuzie this offseason. So do you think, before we go more in-depth on this, that the Titans are the best fit for Justin Simmons. Type in one for yes or two for no. There's somebody else in mind. Go ahead and sound off for me in the comments of today's video. I, frankly, I am surprised Justin Simmons is not yet signed. I, I would have ranked him at the top or at least near of the best available free agents for a good portion of this year's free agency cycle. And we're still over a month away from training camp happening, really almost two months for some teams. But I'm surprised no one's picked him up, and there really hasn't even been that much buzz about him. Yes, he is not the same guy he was in his prime. He's still a good football player. So if you are a team like Tennessee that could be in the market for safety help, yeah, I've got interest there. Uh, the safety room might right now for Tennessee, I like Imani Hooker. I agree with Matt Bowen saying that the safeties are interchangeable. I think Elijah Molden is a fun chess piece on defense. Uh, he can do nickel stuff. He can do safety stuff. Gives you some flexibility involved there. But if one of those guys went down, I don't think anybody really has confidence in, in Mike Brown, who went to my alma mater, Shaheem Carter, you know, uh, Matthew Jackson, Keaton Ellis. Like, that's not a good safety room, I, I don't believe. So even if, you know, you rotate Molden or whatever, you give yourself some chances to do more three safety stuff, which the Ravens did last year with Denard Wilson as, a, as an assistant coach, I think Simmons actually makes a ton of sense for Tennessee. What does the money look like? You know, it is May. It maybe isn't that expensive. But I think for the Titans, whether or not they're the best fit, I don't know. I think they are a good fit, though, for him.